Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth episode of Korean Cinema Today. Here in Seoul, this is Pierce Conran, and I'll be talking to you today about what's going on in the world of Korean cinema. Korean Cinema Today is the podcast from Kobiz, which is the online website for the Korean Film Council. And if you visit there, you will find the latest news, features, and interviews on Korean film. And you'll also find our webzine, our newsletter, to which you, you can subscribe, and of course, tune in again to this podcast. Come find us also on our social media portals. You'll find us on Twitter at twitter.com slash koreanfilmbiz, that's B-I-Z, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash kobiz.kofik. That's K-O-B-I-Z dot K-O-F-I-C. Uh, to find this podcast again, simply search for Korean Cinema Today on iTunes or visit the website, which is koreanfilm.or.kr. Uh, I'm your host, Pierce Conran. Uh, I am a journalist for the Korean Film Council, as well as a correspondent for international film sites, twitchfilm.com, and the founder and editor of Korean film blog, Modern Korean Cinema. Today we will have the great pleasure of welcoming Mark Raymond, a professor from Kwangwon University, the author of Hollywood's New Yorker, The Making of Martin Scorsese, and a, an expert on Korean auteur Hong Sang-soo. So we'll be talking with him just a little later on the auteur, and we're very pleased to have him with us in the studio today. Looking at news for Korean films, uh, next month will be the Berlin International Film Festival. To date, uh, six films have been invited to the very famous event, which is known as one of the three big, uh, big film festivals in the world, along with Cannes and Venice. To the forum section, three Korean films have been invited. Uh, one of those is a world premiere. It's Kelvin Kyungkun Park's a Dream of Iron, um, a documentary which follows his uh, previous film, which was Chong Ye Chon Medley, A Dream of Iron, which also played at Forum back in 2011. Two films will be coming from Busan for the Forum. One of those is Jong Yoon Sok's documentary Nonfiction Diary, which won the Mesonat Award at Busan last year. And Lee Yong Sung's Ten Minutes, uh, another. Both of those are debuts. That is also a film from Busan. It was in the New Currents section and won the Fipreski and KNN Movie Awards. Playing in the Panorama section will be the new film from uh, queer director Lee Song Hyeol. The film is called. Uh, Night Flight. It is also a world premiere, and this is his third film to play in Berlin, following his film No Regrets from 2006 and White Night in, from 2012. Uh, Gina Kim's film Final Recipe will be having a special presentation in the Berlin's culinary section. It will be the opening film of that section. And following the special gala presentation of the film will be a special meal cooked for guests that is inspired by food uh, presented in the film. This is, of course, a, a film about cooking. It's a big global co-production starring Michelle Yeoh that comes from uh, big Korean studio CJ Entertainment. Finally, we have a short, which also comes from the Busan International Film Festival. That is Yoon Gaun Sprout, and that will be competing in the Generation K Plus section. Well, looking back on Korea at the box office, things have been pretty hot recently. And the big film, the big sensation of the last few weeks, the film The Attorney, starring Song Kang-ho, has crossed the 10 million admissions mark. That is now the ninth Korean film to ever cross the mark and the 10th overall. The film will be opening in America uh, on February 10th. The Korean Film Archive uh, had a special press conference recently, and they announced quite a few uh, news tidbits. Among those, they will be restoring the classic film uh, Aimless Bullet by Yoo Hyun Mok, uh, considered one of the greatest Korean films. And uh, the existing print is quite badly damaged, so we're going to try and make that a little better uh, for audiences to rediscover this, this classic in years to come. 
Uh, two other big classics, The Housemaid and uh, March of Fools, those are by Kim Ki-young and Hak Il-jong, will become the first films uh, from Kofa to be released on Blu-ray. So uh, to see those in high definition, I'm sure a lot of film fans will be excited for that. March of Fools has never been released before in English, so that is a particularly interesting film to look forward to. Uh, Korean Film Council also, sorry, the Korean Film Archive also announced its uh, top 100 films. Uh, 62 noted film critics came together to select the films. Uh, at the very top was a three-way tie for with Aimless Bullet, The Housemaid, and March of Fools, as previous mention, previously mentioned. And uh, the only film from after 2000 to crack that top 10 was Bong Joon-ho's Memories of Murder. An additional 16 films from the year 2000 on also feature in the top 100. Looking at the box office, we the attorney finally fell to number two after four weeks at number one and after accruing 10 million admissions. And the number one film is now Frozen, the Disney animation that pulled in over a million admissions on its opening weekend. For an animation in Korea, that is an enormous figure. And uh, the film is likely to play quite well in the coming weeks as reservations are indicating that there is a lot of interest in the film. So today we have the great pleasure of welcoming Mark Raymond. Mark, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, for it's nice to be here. So, Mark, of course, you are a big expert in Hong Sang Su, and uh, we would. Lo- so. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we would love to to pick your pick your brain a little bit about the famous auteur who will be. Uh, soon releasing his 16th film. It's uh, it's amazing over the years how quickly that number has gone up. Yes, uh, for sure. After <laughs> the um, the early years, the uh, the pace is quite quite astounding over the last uh, five to six years. Certainly, yeah. he's he's almost releasing two films every year now. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so like uh, last year with uh, Nobody's Daughter, Haywon and Arson, he both being released in. Uh, in the calendar year of 2013. Indeed, yeah. and both those films still doing quite well on the international festival circuit. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, to start off, uh, why don't you tell us what brought you to Hong Sang Su in the first place? Um, somewhat coincidental, I guess, even though Hong Sang Su, um, although he's not uh, an overly well-known or popular director um, in the West, uh he was sort of written about by a number of sort of scholars. So I actually first encountered his name uh, in a book by David Bordwell uh, called Figures Traced in Light, where he talks uh, a little bit about directors who choose kind of a long take kind of strategy to film uh, sequences. And he actually talked about a sequence from uh, Hong's film, The Virgin Strip Bear by Her Bachelors, which was comes out in 2000. So I read that book in 2006, and I sort of kind of made a note of it kind of in the back of my brain somewhere, but actually I was still living in Canada at the time. Uh, And so when I moved back to Korea in 2007, I started, uh, I kind of picked up a few of his films on DVD here, just kind of saw them and decided to check them out. And I kind of went in order with uh, The Day a Pig Fell in the Well to begin with, The Power of Kwangwon Province, uh, Virgin Strip Bear by Her Bachelors, and something about the films kind of... um, appealed to me. I'm not really sure exactly what, but enough where I wanted to sort of keep watching, keep exploring his films. And then in 2008 at the Jeju Film Festival, um, his film Night and Day played at the festival. That was my first time seeing a film in the theater and with an audience. And that experience really, I think, was important because, um, you know, the film actually went over quite well. I mean, Hong's not known as a popular director, but Mm -hmm. whenever I've seen his films in theaters here, uh, the audiences tend to, you know, laugh quite a bit. They tend to be very into the films. And so that kind of transformed a little bit my kind of perception of Hong. Yeah. And uh, and again, that's something that sort of Hong's, uh, sort of uh, from his earlier films to his later films, they do tend to be more comedic, I think, as they've gone along and more um, Certainly. more audience, maybe audience-friendly, even though that's not a <laughs> word we associate with Hong Sang Su's yeah. work. But they are, I, I do think they are, you know, uh, movies, uh, especially a creative, uh, Korean audiences do tend to, I guess, get a lot of the, the sort of the humor and the uh, uh, 
the, the kind of subtle kind of critiques. Yeah, the various he cultural has. elements there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Night and Day, that's an interesting one because uh, uh, seeing that one being that being the first one to see in the theater, mm -hmm. uh, that's known as quite a hard Hong Sang Soo film for most people. Um, I mean, yeah. so it's long. Um, it's not always its most well liked, but seeing it with a Korean audience must have been quite helpful for that. Yeah, and for a while that was like one of my favorite films. Maybe I think maybe from that experience, I rewatched the film, uh, but it probably last year uh, a couple times uh, uh, for sort of an essay I was preparing, and uh, yeah, I didn't like it as much probably as I remembered. Uh, but it, it's, I still think it's uh, you know quite of a quite of an inter quite an interesting film, and one that um, yeah, it was also sort of his first film in digital, and it uh, it, it was sort of the beginning of this you know, extreme period of, like, uh, that we started to talk about where he's making more and more kind of films, right? It's kind of in that middle period where mm -hmm. still feels a bit more like his older films, but you kind of see where he maybe he's going. So, mm. yeah. I, I, I myself, it's one of the few of his films I haven't seen yet. Right. Although the film was released on Blu-ray, I picked that up recently. Okay. So uh, it's on my to-watch list. I'm looking yeah. forward well, to it. Well, it's not available for a number of years. Exactly, yeah, that's one, true. It's been, yeah. been one, I think, that slipped through a lot of people who were even fans of Hong. If in, you didn't indeed. get a chance to see it in the yeah. festivals, you probably didn't see it. Yeah. That was the case for me. I think it was released in New York as well, as well recently, finally on DVD. Okay. Yeah. Um, so talking then about this uh, this evolution, actually, mm -hmm. I mean, people say that uh, Hong Sang Soo makes a film, the same film, over and over again. Mm -hmm. But really, uh, there there is a bit of an evolution, certainly as you've uh, as you've mentioned. We'd like to talk a little bit about um, how his process has evolved over the years. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think uh, the films uh, that that kind of statement that he makes the same film over and over again, or there's. Uh, is a bit over exaggerated actually. If you if you go back and watch the, a day a pig fell in the well, now I think you can still see uh, some characteristics of Hong Sang Soo, but it's a very different film, very different in tone, very different even in style. If you kind of go back, um, the kind of long take, kind of uh, two shot style we associate with Hong Sang Soo now isn't actually that much in apparent in that in in that film. Like uh, just to give you just. Uh, some numbers, uh, the day of pay, pig fell in the well, the average shot lasts about 25 seconds, which is longer than the average film for certainly. sure. <laughs> but certainly, but uh, to give a parasite up, uh, is the film from last year, Nobody's Daughter, Hey One, the 87 seconds uh, shot. So uh, <laughs> significantly uh, longer uh, take. It's uh, His style has definitely sort of changed, and there's these different kind of phases. Mm. It was kind of very gradual that he started to edit less and less, mm. uh, up to really the film uh, Woman is the Future of Man, which he makes in 2004. And that's a film that has very few edits. Uh, it's I think there's only little over 50 shots in an 87 minute film and what he's um and he's also in that film not cutting in at all like you know, all the camera movement is sort of uh left to right or there's no kind of entering into the scene mm -hmm. there's no cutting and then he makes a tale of cinema in 2005 and he introduces the zoom technique that he has uh, subsequently used in all of his other films mm -hmm. where he does kind of move in and out using this zoom technique. Yeah, very aggressively. Yeah, but it, it's much more um, noticeable than a cut would be. Mm -hmm. And so I think he is using it like he's saying, oh, I do want to cut it, move into a scene or move out of a scene the way a director will, but I don't want to give that kind of seamless kind of transition. I almost want my audience to notice, oh, he's zooming in here. Because even, even somebody who maybe is not... Um, somebody who notices a lot of technique, you can't help but notice the zooms, right? They're very, you know. They're, they're very uh, noticeable. Yeah, I think yeah. for many uh, spectators, they're even uh, even jarring. Some people don't yes. like them. Oh, I'm sure um, most people probably, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people probably don't, that uh, that that style. But there is, um, uh, but I do think there is that sense in which Hong, you know, doesn't want to become this kind of shot, reverse shot, this kind of conventional style. Part of what he's interested in is having the audience uh, uh, be kind of more reflexive about their watching, like what's what's going on mm -hmm. here with the characters, but also what's going on with this kind of style. So. He's, more and more has his films uh, tend towards comedy. I've noticed that those zooms have also been used to uh, to kind of um, 
uh, accentuate reaction shots even. Mm. And uh, so they've been used to, to comedic effect as well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, uh, and that's another kind of evolution of Hong is the fact that, yeah, I do see the films becoming uh, more comedic in their tone. Um, and also the, uh, the sort of gender relations in the film is another kind of aspect that I think is also um, has evolved quite a bit. Um, okay. um, I think Kong's films have always been um, uh, not that all female, not uh, not that all feminist critics would uh, praise Hong Sang Su's films necessarily, but I do think there's always they've always been open to feminist mm-hmm. kind of readings or interpretations even from the beginning. But in the beginning of the films, they tended to be more about let's critique these male characters and their kind of a very kind of narrow and idealistic visions of the world. Uh, Hong talked a lot about that in interviews, um, uh, that he was uh, that he almost admitting to uh, about himself that early on in his life he had these very idealistic visions of the world, and that has changed as he's gotten older, and that's kind of a, a consistent thematic in his early films. Uh, as his films has evolved, though, he's gotten away from that, and he's become more and more interested, I think, in female characters. Female characters take up uh, bigger roles that really kind of, uh, especially with last year's film, Nobody's Daughter, Haywan, which features, I think, the first feature film where it's a female protagonist who's clearly, you know, the lead character. It's not split with right. other characters. She's clearly the lead. She's in almost almost every scene, mm-hmm. and it's clearly from her perspective. And even has female or her voiceover is the is the main voiceover of the film, so I, that's definitely been another kind of sort of evolution that's gone along with um, the kind of stylistic um, changes as well. Definitely. So, are, are there any anything else in terms of his uh, his themes that you would say have changed a lot over the years? I mean, he. Um, he he tends to use a lot of the same things, a lot of the same kind of uh, um, film director or film professor characters and students, so, you know, elements of himself in there um, uh, as well. Uh, perhaps, you know, uh, he's kind of being self-deprecating to, to, to a certain point. Mm-hmm. But would you say that his, uh, his, his themes have gradually changed over the years as well? Um, I think so. I think um, something I've kind of uh, uh, sort of I wrote a kind of a essay on Hong last uh, I published fairly recently and one of the things I was interested in is is this kind of question of the evolution of Hong Sang Su's style and in particular I, f- I felt that uh, really uh, s- beginning with uh, Oki's movie which comes out in 2010 uh, that really represented I think a real kind of change into the self-reflexive nature of Hong's films that becoming more and more like a stronger theme because as you mentioned, uh, film directors and film students uh, kind of recur. But um, his earlier films, actually, they're usually not film directors or film students. They're artists of some type, mm. right? They're like uh, uh, writers or they're um, uh, maybe they're in the film business, but they're not necessarily a director. Yeah, editors uh, or producers. Editors, like producers. That. They're... Um, uh, they're a painter, like mm-hmm. in Night and Day. There's so there are usually, and there are sort of professor figures as well who are also in some of those earlier films. But it's really with these la- in the last, you know, really four or five years where he started making uh, these films in really rapid order, where it's almost always now film directors, film students, mm-hmm. film professors that, uh, and I and I do think the films have become more about. And it's but it's hard. Hong Hong's tricky because you know are they really about him or mm-hmm. they're just about his experiences, right? You, you know, he doesn't really you know lay his cards on the table in terms of you know how accurate this is. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, I mean, a, he's a notoriously uh, difficult interview subject, yes, from what I've yes. heard. He's very evasive, yes. but uh, also quite funny. Yeah. But of course, he is he himself is also a professor. He yes. does this. Uh, he kind of uh, splits his ear where. For yeah. one one quarter, he'll make a film. Then he'll he'll do his classes, make a film, do his classes, yeah, and has been for pretty much his whole career. Actually, going wow. going back to, uh, you can actually read an interview. One of the first interviews of Hong in English was done by uh, uh, Scott Bergeson, who, and it's actually in. If you there's this collection called Korea Bug, which is this mm-hmm. uh, collection of pieces from this uh, early kind of me- like kind of zine that was. Uh, published in Korea in the late 90s, early 2000s. And this is an interview that was published 
right before Power of Kwangwoon Province came mm-hmm. out around 1998. And Hong Zhao already talks about in that interview um, his role as a professor, why he likes being a professor. He says in the film it's partly to keep him in touch with the real world, he says in that interview. That's interesting. Which is the opposite of what people usually think, is yeah, the academic as an ivory bubble. tower <laughs> kind of thing. But he feels like in terms of that they're they're every like their students they're still struggling they're not in the film business mm. yet they're still you know so he feels that it keeps him you know at least at that time yeah and, and of course there's obviously financial reasons I sure think, um, to you know it's part of how he keeps you know working and you know uh, so looking out on the on the outside world a little more um He's uh, his his new film, his sixteenth film, which I believe is currently untitled uh, at the moment. Um, uh, Jong Eun Che, who plays Hyewon and Nobody's daughter Hyewon, mm-hmm. will uh, be appearing in that film, alongside the um, Japanese actor uh, Kaseryo, who uh, has appeared in films like uh, Letters from Iwo Jima, uh, Kitat no Takeshi's Outrage and Outrage Beyond, and uh, uh, Korida Hirokazu's uh, Nobody Knows. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is not the first time we've had a foreign actor in one of his films. Right. Um, Isabelle Huppert famously played three roles in In Another Country in 2012. Yes. And um, uh, who was the actress that appeared briefly in Nobody's Daughter, Heywon? Oh, uh, uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg, is that? Uh, her mother. Her mother. Charlotte yeah. Gainsbourg's mother. Yeah. And her name escapes me right now. <laughs> uh, uh, Jane Birkin. Is that yes, correct? exactly. Yeah, Jane yeah. Birkin. Yes. Yeah. Um, so w- what do you make of this use of foreign actors in his films? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, if you kind of go back at uh, so at least even some of the earlier films and and even into the middle period, you start to see this kind of creep into Hong's films, this interest in um, uh, foreign cultures. And, um, yeah, I think of a scene like in um, A Woman on the Beach, there's a sort of a famous uh, kind of scene from that film where, uh, the female character of, who has lived in Germany for a couple of years and admits to of having relationships with uh, German men, and this really sets off the lead character, the Korean character, this uh, uh, this revelation of these relationships. And I think it's already Hong kind of, uh, and of course Hong's been somebody who has studied himself uh, abroad widely. He's, he's somebody who, um, so I think it is part of his own personal kind of experiences, kind of filtering those in what uh, uh, he's clearly interested in, not just Korean culture or just not in Korean, not only Korean society, but also, you know, and especially in the world that we're we're living in, the world his films circulate in, you know, foreignness is clearly uh, something that he wants to to explore. So you get, um, you know, the film festival world that is depicted in Like You Know It All, mm-hmm. for example. And, the and, there's some, film and there's some fa- foreign characters there. They don't have very big roles yet, but yeah, it's kind of creeping into his films. And then, mm. of course, In Another Country is where he finally, you know, he has, a, you know, a, uh, a film that's mostly in English as opposed to Korean, his only film that has done that yet. And mm-hmm. with, you know, again, um, a French actress, as he's mentioned, in the, in the lead role. And so... Yeah, it's not really, um, and I mean, uh, yeah, I kind of, um, I could kind of see this. And again, also, Night and Day is set in Paris, right? Mm-hmm. Even though there's very few non-Korean characters, it's almost part of the joke of that film <laughs> is that he's in Paris, but everyone he interacts, most of the people he interacts with are this expat community of Koreans living in in uh, in Paris. But uh, I think there is, uh, the, that's kind of been an interest in, in Hong, this kind of uh, mixing, let's say, this, you know, what what we might call cultural hybridity with, to sort of contrast with this idea of, like, the pure Korean kind of nation, or which I think Hong has always been very skeptical of, or sure. very critical of, actually, in most of his work. Yeah. So certainly, um, again, something from his experiences, uh, you mentioned he studied abroad. He, he studied in Paris, didn't he? Yeah, and Chicago, and as Chicago well, as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and actually, a lot of his characters in his films, uh, what, I mean, they're they're in France and night and day, but uh, they some of the students, for instance, are going to go and study abroad, like uh, Sunny from our son, uh, our Sunny. Her mm-hmm. the impetus for her meeting the characters in the film is because she's getting ready to um, to to study abroad, right. And uh, and then Hewan, her mother, is is goes off to Canada, so mm-hmm. that's ha- that happening twice and again in the same year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, uh, and uh, I mean, again, that's uh, with these, um, 
And they, um, I'm wondering how much of this is um, with um, that Hong, because he's concentrating on these film students and his own sort of experiences. But he, again, he, I think it's what's interesting in the recent films is that he's uh, exploring this from a different kind of perspective, right? From a female perspective, from a, and again, from a different kind of a generation than he comes from, like as opposed to you might say woman is the future of man you know there's the director character who has studied abroad in the US and then come like actually the flashback is before he leaves and then the the present day of that film is after he's returned right that feels much more like probably hong relate you know thinking about his own experiences mm-hmm. now i think he might be thinking about yes his experiences but also experiences i'm sure his students have had or or people he knows and of course not not uncommon for Korean students to, you know, increasingly want to go abroad and, sure. and go abroad, and so I think he's uh, um, kind of exploring that kind of uh, that kind of territory, and mm. you know, in almost like what is you know, what are these characters seeking by going abroad? What does foreignness represent in some ways? Right? Um, it's um, uh, I don't think it's just you know oh, I want to study or I want to get an education. There's, I think there's also this idea of, you know, can I sort of break out of this, you know, uh, or or is, it, or is it just escapism, right? Yeah. I think Hong is, is quite... Curiosity. Am- yeah, I think he's ambiguous about that. For sure. So, okay, well, like, what is the motivation of these characters yeah. to, you know, go so, abroad? So speaking of this uh, this, this foreign element, uh, do you think that... Uh, I mean, Hong Sang-soo has, a, has kind of a steady fan base mm-hmm. um, in foreign circles, particularly in France, again, and uh, in various, you know, the art house circuit of Europe. He does quite well at festivals. His films are yes. always go to a lot of events. Um, do you think his, his, uh, his fan base could, could, could grow internationally over time? Yeah, it's a difficult question. Um, I think in Europe, um, he's kind of, I think the fan base is a bit stronger. Uh, United States is more difficult, I think. Uh, it's Hong's sensibility and the kind of sensibility or the type of films that tend to uh, do well. And by do well, I mean even in the art, in the very limited sort of art house festival circuit are not the types of films Hong Sing Su really does. That's true. Um, He's not somebody who is um, like a Bong Joon-ho or a Park Chan-wook who, or even a Kim Ki-duk who have um, a very expressive style, mm-hmm. something that people can, you know, latch on to. He's, um, uh, his films are much quieter, they're much smaller scale, and uh, I think a lot of people can sort of miss... Most, especially if you only watch one Hong Sang Soo film, right? It's very difficult to you get. You never it. just watch one. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult. Like when you watch, I mean, I, I know when I watched The Day of Pig Fell in the Well, I was hardly overly enthused with it, but there was just something about the film that made mm-hmm. me think, oh, there's something I want to keep exploring here, but it's not a film that kind of wows you the way, mm-hmm. you know, Memories of Murder or Old Boy or something wows you, right? So that's it's a, it's it, a different it's, style. Yeah. yeah uh, so. But yeah, certainly in France, uh, uh, we, there are some kind of French artists who kind of uh, share kind of similar traits. The, mm-hmm. the famous director Eric, um, Eric Omer, yes. who made very similar films like Claire's Knee or My Night with Maud. Um, I, I myself have always uh, uh, found his work uh, similar to, in a way, to kind of the humanist uh, French writers like uh, Honoré de Balzac and his, uh, his, his 100 books in the Human Condition series right. <laughs> or all the Rougon Macquart books of uh, Emile Zola, you know, these books that are, again, that occur in this, exist in these same worlds and are often very, very similar. So perhaps there is, yeah, there's just kind of shared sensibility that French audiences have latched on to. Right, and uh, Romer is an interesting case in the sense that he did have a bit of a career in the art house, but that was a very specific moment in time Mm. in the late 60s, early 70s, when the art house movement in the United States was very strong. There was enough space for somebody like a Romer, a quieter kind of style to emerge. Um, It's much harder for, I think, that to happen with Hong uh, kind of today. And yeah, and so so often Hong, and also also Hong sometimes, um, uh, because the style isn't as visually arresting as um, even like really slow other sort of minimalist directors like a Ho Xiao Shen mm-hmm. or somebody, he's more immediately dazzling in some ways, even though his films are not meant for mass consumption either. There is something kind of uh, striking about his films mm-hmm. or a Wong Kar Wai or people like that. 
Hong isn't really、uh, going to appeal to that kind of aesthetic either. It's it's a very different kind of、uh, kind of probably why Romare as well, even though he's well respected in cinephile circles, he isn't John Luc Godard. He's no, not Francois、certainly. Truffaut, right? He isn't. He doesn't have quite that level、right. of fame. So taking into consideration the, perhaps the more difficult nature of、uh, Hong Sang Soo's films, well, what would you recommend as good entry points into his work for、uh, for someone who's never seen any of his? Right. Yeah, it's just,、uh, an important question, actually. I think, especially with Hong, probably more than anybody, because I know、um, there was、um, a few months ago I listened to an episode of、uh, Film Spotting, which is a kind of a podcast that talks about,、uh, you know, and from a fairly you know cinephile kind of perspective, and they did the film、uh, Woman on the Beach as、mm-hmm. part of this kind of Korean auteurs kind of marathon where they were trying to catch up with Korean directors. And they did not like the film at all. Neither of the two、um, hosts, and I think that was, you know, not a not woman on the beach would not be a film I would choose as your entry point in the Hong.、Uh, I think it's、um, it's one you really need to know, you know, some of his other work and what it's kind of building on to really appreciate. Get familiar with him at that. Yeah,、point. I think so. And so,、um, uh, I mean, the film I would recommend is probably Oki's movie from two thousand and ten, partly because it's.、Uh, Uh, very short. It's about eighty minutes,、yeah. so it's a good introduction. And not only is it eighty minutes, it's also structured as a series of short films.、Mm-hmm. So even though, I mean, the whole film is directed by Hong Sang Soo, it's it almost gives you kind of、uh, the different characters' kind of own perspective on、uh, on this kind of love triangle、mm-hmm. kind of situation between two film students and a professor. And so, yeah, that's that's one I would really kind of recommend, especially again the last、uh, film, which is actually also called Oki's Movie. Within this film, within a film, is yeah one of my favorite things Hong's ever done. It's about a twenty-minute little short from the female character's、mm-hmm. perspective, and it's、uh, it's yeah it's very very interesting to see you know this male di- this older male director taking on the perspective of how would a young female. Film student make a film. What kind of film would she make? And this is what he comes up with. And yeah, I think it's really great. So that, that's certainly one. I mean, if you want to go back to his earlier work, I really like *The Virgin Strip Bear* by Her Bachelors,、uh, especially if you're really in, interested in narrative and the different kind of things people can do with narrative. Yeah, they learned a lot from that, that one. That one's a very complex film and one that. Even film scholars are still debating each other over in terms of what it actually means.、Mm. So, so yeah, those 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 would be two I would uh, uh, I would recommend as、Definitely. a kind of a start. Yeah, yeah、um, Oki's movie, yeah, very short. It's it's、uh, it's, it's quite light. It's very funny, and、mm-hmm. yeah, that last twenty minutes, that last segment,、um, I would agree, it's among the best the best things he's ever done. Yeah. yeah.、Um, so then, looking at yeah at your at your taste, what if you were to choose three favorite Hong Sang Soo films, what might those be? Um, I think it would、um, it would be those two films I mentioned, Oki's movie and、uh, the Virgin Strip Bear by Her Bachelors. Those are two of my favorites.、Um, film I really like is Woman Is the Future of Man.、Uh, it's one that's maybe not as popular. It's more more divisive with、uh, his、uh, his fans, but I really.、Uh, I really liked、uh, how stripped down that film is in terms of its style. It's before Hong introduces the zoom lens, but there's a yeah. I think it's a very, very tight, very controlled kind of film, and yeah, I, I quite like it a, a lot. That's、uh, that's one that I would also recommend.、Uh, you know, as I, I mentioned, Night and Day already. That's that's one that maybe has dropped a little bit in my <laughs> appreciation watching it again, but it's still、uh, something. Uh, and that's a film that,、uh, yeah, I think Kong's humor really shines through in that film. That's the one I really find extremely funny. And and you know, I mean, I think it's also, and I should mention that、uh, uh, the Day a Pig Fell in the Well is available actually for streaming, right? A lot yeah, uh, on, through on the, YouTube, through on the, the on the Korean Film Archives. Yeah,、so. and, that, and that's、uh, a film that's.、Uh, Although probably the darkest of Hong、mm-hmm. Sang Soon's film,、uh, it's a film I think that actually does fit a bit more into what maybe Western viewers would think of as art cinema, what art cinema is. So if you're a fan of you know、uh, that kind of、uh, these kind of more difficult art films,、uh, Day a Pig Fell in the Well is certainly、uh, 
a very uh, impressive first feature and, and one that you know critics here in Korea were very fond of and really made his reputation right from the beginning, even though it now feels quite different yeah. from his later work. It's still, uh, still uh, an excellent film as great. well. So there's a number of great recommendations, uh, some films I look forward to going back to, and of course, I promise I'm going to watch Night and Day very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, thanks so much for coming in today. Uh, this has been a fascinating discussion on Hong Sang-soo, and uh, thank you for sharing your insights with us. Thank you for having me. It's been great. For this week's In Focus, uh, where I try and recommend a Korean film that is currently making the rounds, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, Lee Yong sungs debut film, Ten Minutes, which was one of the uh, competitors in the new current section of the Busan International Film Festival last year. That is a section that um, features first or second films by Asian filmmakers. The film was quite successful at the festival as it won both the Fipreski Prize and the KNN Movie Award. And now it has followed that up by receiving an invitation to the Berlin International Film Festival's forum section. Uh, the film follows a young man who takes on a, an internship in a government job, and while at the same time he's studying to pass his producer's exam. And because of some financial instability at home um, and some pressure at work, he he is eventually offered a position, a full-time position, and he it's very difficult for him to decide whether to take it or whether to pursue his dream. Ultimately, he does uh, take it, but uh, the moment that he accepts to do the job, it ends up in someone else's hands. So the film is quite understated, uh, but explores the very difficult work environment in Korea and uh, the, the pressure on society society on young people to conform um, or to to have kind of uh, these things known as stable stable jobs stable positions and uh, how that can be just a, a great burden on them so it's a it's it's a terrific little film a, gr- a very strong debut uh, the film comes from latte entertainment and once again the film will be playing in uh, Berlin in February well, that's it for this week, and uh, we just had a great discussion with Mark Raymond about Hong Sang Soo. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did, and uh, please be sure to visit us at koreanfilm.or.kr or to listen again to our podcast on iTunes by searching for the title, which is Korean Cinema Today. Uh, that's it for us this week. Thank you very much for listening, and we will we will have the best for you in Korean film next time. Bye for now. <laughs>